Happy Sabbath, dear church. Let us pray at this moment. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. And we honor you and we worship you and we are so thankful for the salvation that you have provided for each and every one of us. As we come together, O oh Lord, we want to surrender ourselves to you, our hearts, our minds. Everything we have, O oh Lord, everything we do, we want to give it back to you. And we ask that you may bless us as a congregation, bless us individually as families. And we ask, O oh Lord, as we are blessed, that we, are provi we can provide salvation for those who are, who are lost right now without you. Bless our community, O oh Lord, in a mighty way, and everything we do here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everybody here. Did anybody have something good happen to themselves this week? I, I did. There are lots of hands out there. Isn't it amazing? And this gives us all reason to worship the Lord and enjoy the Sabbath today. With the great controversy waging and all the big things that are happening prophetically, I mean, just the big picture, everything that the Lord has to keep in mind, he's still just as interested in each and every one of us and the details of our life. Isn't that amazing? And he can keep track of all of that. That's amazing. And that's something that we can celebrate today while we're here to worship and, and be together. Um, we have some announcements. Okay, hold on to your seats here. We're going to have potluck next week. Bring a visitor and bring food. And remember, I like cherry pie. Okay. Okay. And I think it's going to be continuing on as normal. Also, Sabbath school classes, like the classrooms and the normal routine, that's all going to be normal next week. So that'll be a good thing. And um, looking forward to next week. We got some really good cooks in this congregation, I'm here to tell you. Um, but bring visitor. No board meeting for July. I think most, uh, most of them know that. There's going to be a work meet coming up, but it's not announced yet. But just keep that in mind. There's a few things that can happen. And uh, I see something here about a revival next weekend in Clovis, in person or live on the web. There should be a flyer probably out front. I'm guessing. I haven't seen one yet. And July 17th, we're going to do a prayer drive through 10 a.m. or 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Those are really fun. I don't know if anybody, but we're out here and there's a sign and people in need, they can take their car and drive in and we'll pray for them. And it's going to be before it gets hot. And it, it's, it's one of those things that you really got to try out because it's like visiting people. You really don't want to get up and go, but once you get there, you're really happy that you do. There's a sign-up sheet for that, so, so uh, have people sign up for it. Huh? I, need, I need help. I need volunteers to help. So if they can sign up their name. Oh, sign? Yeah. yeah, that's right. I saw, didn't know what he was saying there for a while. There's a sign-up sheet on the table. I saw it. We'd like to know who can attend so that we know that we have coverage and we have people. Because once we get going, we're going to need some people. And so feel free to sign up for that. That's July 17th. And then um, 17th to the 21st is a virtual camp meeting. I think we're still going to have church here, too. Yes, we'll have regular church. Like we've done so many times before, we'll still have regular church right here. Uh, but the camp meeting is going to happen this year, and it's going to be virtual. And then... Um, August 13th and 14th, just two days, we're, we're going to have an evangelistic meeting. Keep your eyes and ears open for that. That's only about six weeks away, I'd say, maybe seven. So anyways, welcome. Glad to have you here. Where's Randy? 
Randy's going to have the children's story today. So if the children want to come up, Randy's a pretty good storyteller. Come on up, kids. Sorry, let me make this announcement, and that is that uh, effective after next Sabbath, uh, we will be recollecting our offer, children's offering again. So you may uh, prepare that as parents as well. All right? Thank you. Good morning. I have a question, okay? How many of you like to go on vacation? How about out here? Anybody like to go on vacation? Oh yeah. Don't wanna miss out, do we? Is there any place in particular you like to go on vacation? We'll start down here. Hawaii. Hawaii, boy. You like to go really good vacation, huh? Disneyland. Disneyland. <coughs> uh, Universal Studio. Okay. How about Grandma's house, huh? You like to go visit Grandma? Yeah. San Diego. San Diego's nice. <laughs> Universal Studios. Yeah, okay. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Arizona. Arizona. That's where I'm going in next week. Arizona. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, do you know what happens to my wife every time we decide we're going on vacation? She gets so excited, she can't sleep the night before. If we're going to leave in the morning, she's so excited she can't sleep that night. You ever get that way? You get that way too? You can't sleep at night because you're so excited to go on vacation. Yep. I've even seen commercials on TV like that. People can't sleep at night. You know what? Jesus has planned a vacation for us. But it's a permanent vacation. You know, one day he's going to come and he's going to pick us all up and take us someplace we've never been before and has a wonderful, wonderful program planned for us. We're going to learn things. We're going to see things. We're going to go places you can't imagine and I can't imagine. Is that exciting? Yes, it is. And you know what? I don't think I'll be able to sleep. I'll be so excited. So let's remember, we go on vacation here on this earth, and we go nice places, and we even go visit grandma and stuff. But Jesus has the ultimate vacation planned for us. And you know what? It won't last just three or four days or maybe a week. How long will it last when Jesus takes us on vacation? Forever. Forever. That's a long time, isn't it? I like forever. That's going to be wonderful. Jesus is going to take us to heaven, and we'll be there forever doing all these wonderful things and going places and learning lots of things about Jesus. So I'm excited about that. And I hope you get excited, too. And you know what? If we're excited about it, we can share that with other people, can't we? We can share that with our friends. We can share that with our neighbors. We can let them know that, hey, Jesus is coming. He's going to take us on vacation. 
and we're going to have a wonderful time. So come with us. I think it's contagious. So let's remember that this week. Don't forget to share Jesus and share that he's coming back and share that he's going to take us someplace on a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful vacation permanently. Thank you very much, children. You can go back to your seats. the welcoming I was looking out the kids are so many but they're kind of small I didn't see them and then I'm look again and boy the whole rose is filled up isn't that neat I'm glad to see that it's time uh, time now for the offering it's time to be able to participate and show the Lord our appreciation for all that he's done for us. The deacons, they're coming forward. I'm very thankful for the opportunity at all times. And there's so much that can be done. So let's ask the Lord to bless this offering and put it to good use. Lord, we come to you. We thank you for taking care of us, for our home, for our jobs, for just watching over us even in the in-betweens from everything when we're not sure what's going to happen. One thing is for sure, for all the life that we have all lived, we're still here, and that's because of you. And so knowing that you are the ones that are guiding our feet and our steps, we just want to say thank you and participate in offering and tithes. Bless this and that it may come to good use, that other people may come to know you through the various ministries. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sabbath, dear church, once again. God bless you. Thank you for being uh, uh, choosing to be here with us this morning to worship uh, together. And uh, I hope the Lord accepts our worship this morning. I would like to invite you to open your script to your Bibles to Acts chapter 1, a very uh, common passage there in Acts chapter 1. I'm going to be reading verses 9 through 11. Acts 1, 9 through 11. And he says, after he said this, he was, and Jesus, talking about Jesus, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. What are we, what are we experiencing here? Jesus' ascension, right? And then verse 10. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Verse 11. 
Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back the same way you have seen him go into heaven. What an amazing scripture reading for us this morning as we celebrate uh, the communion service this morning. I would like to say that communion is just as a reminder of what Jesus has planned to do, and that is to come and get us out of this planet into heaven, right? Into the promised land. And, uh, you know, his, all of this stuff, his second coming is based on his sacrifice on our behalf. And I know that perhaps some of you are struggling with issues, uh, mental issues, spiritual issues, physical issues, concerns and disappointments, and, you know, uh, all the burdens that we may have, all of that stuff some, somehow creates depression and stress, and, you know, we feel awful sometimes, you know, but we can come to Jesus and realize that when he promised things, he will fulfill them. And he has promised that he will come back to get us. And I believe that. How many of you believe that? Jesus will come back soon. But there's someone here today that would like to share uh, that perhaps you're struggling, but you have in your heart that desire to see Jesus again. You know that he's coming again. And that promise gives you, you know, the energy to resist the devil so that he can flee from you. And is there someone here today that would like to uh, share a testimony, a praise, or, uh, or a request uh, that you may have uh, for you this morning? Anybody? We have individuals with microphones, so raise your hand. I have Joanne here on the right-hand side. All the things that he has done for me, as you mentioned, a lot of us suffer with, you know I've suffered with pain in my foot with arthritis, but through the years I've had one thing after another, and God has worked so many miracles, and I have learned to trust him. So when things come up, it's good to know that he's always there to help us. Because he's helped me, I know he can help each one of you. So always trust him. Thank Amen. you. Amen. God bless you. Anybody else? Uh, see your hand, Joe. I have a praise this morning. My praise is the warmth we feel coming back to church with all our Sabbath school classes, our church service, and everything turning to normal. It just warms a person's heart to see all the brothers and sisters and being able to, to, to uh, interact with each other again. Amen. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Just to be reminded, uh, on Monday at 7 a.m., uh, Jean Huang will, be, will have surgery. So pray for her as she does, and then she will have a few couple of weeks re uh, recuperating from that. So we pray that uh, everything will go, go as planned and led by the Lord. So pray for her this, this uh, morning. Pray for others that are not here. I know John Gordon is not here, so pray for him. Uh, Dorinda Blank as well. Uh, Sam James as well, who had surgeries recently, and they're uh, just rehab, so rehabbing, so pray for them. Right, anybody else? Another prayer. All right, so can we stand? Can we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again to thank you for your blessings, for your guidance, for the promise that you have made us that you will be back to get us and take us into heaven. Uh, we know that is truth, and uh, that's the truth, and we recognize that we need to have that truth in our lives that hope of the resurrection, the hope of the second coming, 
the hope of the eternal redemption that you have provided for us. So today we ask, O oh Lord, in a special way that our hearts may be filled with that promise and that we prepare for the second coming of the Lord. In a special way, we request prayers for uh, all of us that have requested this morning, but in a special way, be, the, be with uh, Jean on, on Monday as she goes for, the, for her surgery, that you may provide healing for her, that you may provide uh, a, a nice recovery from all this surgery and, and provide for her family as well. We also ask that you bless uh, San James, Dorinda Blank, and others that are not here this morning, that you may provide for them as well. Uh, visit us, O oh Lord, be with us, and let us feel, allow us to feel your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. You may be seated. Is there anybody with a special music this morning? Not sure. You want to sing? Sister, come, come over. Amen. Praise God, right? You can grab either microphone or you can come here. It's up to you. Happy Sabbath. And when we get to heaven, we are going to sing one language. Amen. I want to sing in my language from SDH 332. SDH 332, but I'm going to sing in my language. Amen. More. Rigby moon la rada isu to jito fa Jesu Christo lu balami ta kasa be hara isu
very much. That was uh, beautiful. The Lord is good, right? All the time. God is good. This morning I'll be speaking from the subject impending departure. So let me bow our heads and let us pray as we submerge in the scriptures. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. And we honor you and worship you. And as we open the scriptures, O Lord, that you may speak to me and to everyone here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everything was ready for his trip to the desolate uh, northern Alaskan wilderness. And this man did the right preparation for this trip. He was going there to photograph natural beauty and the mysteries of the tundra that are in Alaska, north of Fairbanks. He took along with him 500 rolls of film, several firearms, because, you know, there's a lot of uh, animals there that could, you know, dam damage him. So he took firearms, and he also took 1,400 pounds of provisions. As he arrived... 225 miles north of Fairbanks in the middle of, the, of nowhere by himself. Uh, the airplane took him there and left him, and he settled into his routine of taking pictures and, and writing uh, a daily journal of his uh, experiences in the wilderness. And, you know, everything was going as planned, and it was good for him. He, you know, he was creating a, a nice file of, of pictures and experiences, as the months passed, um, the words of his journal uh, changed from wonder and fascination into a nightmare because of the following reason. In August, he wrote in his journal, uh, our traveler wrote, I think I should have used more foresight about arranging my departure from this place. You know, he arrived, but he forgot to tell the pilot to come for, you know, back for him. <laughs> so... In other words, he bought a one-way ticket uh, to nature in Alaska. In November, then, uh, they found his body uh, in a nameless valley, in a nameless, nameless lake in the middle of the wilderness, not even coming closer to his departure from there. He died by himself. He died in the wilderness. He made no provision to be flown out of the wilderness the Bible also is filled of uh, individuals who made the same mistake. The Israelites made the same mistake in similar uh, situation. Uh, for a while, they had all the, they needed, uh, as according to them. They had, you know, they had become um, somehow, they had become uh, oblivious of, of, of the, what was happening to them. But they didn't think about the outcome of living attached to this world. And therefore, uh, you know, when the time came, 
uh, they, were, they were not able to, um, how would I say, they were not able to prepare themselves to leave Egypt uh, as they were about to leave Egypt. Uh, you know, and their thus failing, they failed to consider their impending departure from Egypt. Uh, they have been there for so long, 483 years. Imagine that. They're just, they, were, they had no identity as God's people. They, they had no God and no Sabbath worship. They had, you know, no, uh, uh, no, how would I say, behavior as a Christian. They were just uh, basically a form of Egyptians that uh, are Israelites, but they were Egyptians in practice and in culture uh, due to the and slavery there so for 483 years. So, uh, you know, this is what's happening, and they needed to understand their impending departure and what it meant, uh, what entailed. Uh, have you thought about your exit from this world? Have you? Is anybody here planning to leave this world? You raise your hand. Are you? So what are you doing in your plans? What are you doing to leave our planet? Are you saving money so that we can play, uh, pay uh, Elon Musk to take us out, into the, out of the, this world into the space? Is that what we are talking about here? Well, because if, you're, if you are, you have to be rich at least. At least $500,000 for that, for that seat. Uh, you know, trusting Christ as our Savior and living for Him each day is the only way you and I will be sure that we have prepared ourselves for departure. Again, trust in whom? Christ. Or do we trust in our heavy bank accounts? Do we trust on our possessions, what we have, houses, cars, you know, whatever we have? What is your foundation uh, for you, for this travel, this trip that you need to take uh, into the promised land? It is unfortunate to see how many people make every provision for life here on earth, and yet, you know, they, they, they're not making the right moves, so pre preparation to go into heaven. Our bank accounts are loaded with all kinds of financial arrangements that basically secure our lives to this earth. We have new homes, new cars, new RVs. We have land. We have uh, uh, retiring plans all together. And yet, we make no preparation for our departure from this world. Why is that? God has warned us that there's life after death. Do you believe that? There's life after death. Do you believe that there's life out there in, in space somewhere? Do you believe that? And we don't believe in UF, UFOs, right? We don't believe in that. But we believe that there's somewhere in heaven, somewhere in the, in the solar system, uh, somewhere that we can go and enjoy eternity with our Lord. Now, God has warned us that there's life after death, uh, after which comes the judgment that uh, he has mentioned. As God warned Israel to prepare to meet God, so he warns us as well. In uh, Amos chapter 4, verse 12, we read the following. Amos chapter 4, verse 12. Therefore, thus I do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. What is, what is Amos saying to uh, the people in Israel at that time, 800 years before Christ? What is he saying? Prepare for what? To meet God. What is he saying? He's talking about the Messiah's coming. But to us, in our context this morning, what he's saying to you is that you and I need to be prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ, his second coming, which we don't know when that will happen. So therefore, our job is to, to be what? Prepared. Now, how do you go about preparing for the second coming of Jesus? In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 and 28, we read, Just as people are destined to die once, and after that to face the judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and, and, to, um, and then he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvations to those who are doing what? 
waiting for him. Are you waiting for Jesus this morning? Are you? Is your lifestyle telling us or telling you that you are ready waiting for the Lord? Or is, or, or is if your lifestyle, uh, your lifestyle uh, style perhaps giving you the sign that you are not ready, that you are, not, uh, that you are in the wrong path? Are you prepared to meet the Lord, to meet God? Is your preparation strictly dealing with your current earthly phase, or are you preparing your impending departure from earth? Which one of the two are you doing? You know, there's a lot of people, a lot of people that I know that are purchasing land in the middle of nowhere because perhaps when we are attacked or the cities are attacked or Christianity, you know, the religious, uh, religious attack that will suffer, they will go to this land and they perhaps will live safely in that place. Is that what you are preparing for? Or are you preparing to leave earth all completely and go to heaven? Not only we have the impending second coming of our Lord, which uh, has been in the waiting for the last 2,000 years, by the same token, we have our impending departure from this world. And that needs to take place right now, today, this morning. We cannot leave our departure from this earth as something that it will be in the future. We have to deal with it now because this is a personal uh, reasonable decision that you have to make in your life to decide to leave, uh, you know, to leave this earth and go into heaven. Now we start living the heavenly, uh, heavenly style of life here on earth. Therefore, what I'm talking about to you is that you need to be prepared and ready for heaven now here in this place. Thus today, I would like to study about our impending departure from this world as it relates to the communion and the second coming. For the intent of our study, uh, let us open our Bibles to uh, the book of Exodus chapter 12. If you have it, Exodus chapter 12, we're going to read verses 1, to, 1 to, through 3. Exodus chapter 12, 1, 2, 3. All right, do we have it? And it says, Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of month for you. It is to be the first month of the year to you. Verse 3. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month they are each one to take a lamb for themselves, according to their father's households, a lamb for each household. What is, what is God telling Moses that we need to pay attention to this morning? I want you to see that the foundation for the journey, leaving, uh, departing from the land of Egypt, had a foundation. And that trip, that journey, the foundation what was the sacrifice of the lamb. And we have to understand that, that then redemption is the first step in the process of salvation that will take us into heaven. So we will go to heaven because redemption occurred, because redemption happened when Jesus died on our behalf. And this is what uh, God is trying to uh, put in the mindsets of the Israelites in Egypt. You, you, they, you, they, they had to understand that anything uh, regarding salvation begins with the redemption of Jesus Christ because of the death of the uh, lamb on their behalf and you know they needed to understand that and perhaps today you need to understand the same are you planning to go into heaven then you have to part your ways from your first point uh, step on the way is the cross of Christ what he did on our behalf in that place so therefore uh, you know they needed to have this new beginning and notice uh, what God wants to communicate to you and I this morning is that it doesn't matter what you have accomplished or not in the past. It doesn't matter what you have done or not, right? Uh, it doesn't matter your actions. Uh, they're not taken into consideration. It doesn't matter your success. It's not important. It doesn't matter your failures. They're not important either. It doesn't matter your happiness or, sa or sadness. Not relevant. Why? 
Because God wants you to journey into the promised land with a new opportunity, with a new blank page in your life. That's why he addressed them and he told them, today it will be your first month. Now, they had been living there for 483 years. But now, on this day, this last day that they were in Egypt, they started counting the, their new time for them. It was a new opportunity, a second chance in their lives. And God is telling them, you know, I'm giving you this second chance in your life. Uh, and, and this blank page. So if you were a criminal, there's new beginning with Jesus. Right, Moses? Right? If, the, if, there, if you're a hypocrite, then you, have a new, the, you are a new person in Christ. Therefore, move on from that. If you were a liar uh, and you were a committed sinner, then there's a new beginning in Christ. All you have to do is accept me, the Lord says, and you'll have a new beginning in your life. And I ask you this morning, are you willing to allow Jesus in your life so as to begin your life today? A new life, a new creature in Christ. Would you say amen to that? There's new beginning in Christ. And this is what Moses is trying to convey to Israel at this moment. Now notice that the journey to the promised land became the birth of the nation. This is the first time that Israel has an identity after 483 years of slavery. So Israel had, had been stripped of their identity. And now, you know, God is saying, okay, you didn't have a God? Here I am. I am God, right? I am here. So then they didn't have a spiritual connection. So now Moses is trying to guide his people to be connected with the Lord. And the connection begins with the death of the Lamb, right? With the death of the Lamb. The Lamb of God connected, you know, what was separated by sin. Connected us back to God. It allowed us a second chance in our lives. The salvation through the Lamb of God. And this is what God is intending to tell this people. Now, they, uh, now as they're about to start on their journey toward the promised land, they become God's people. You see, before they had no identity. Notice how their new beginning and their new birth as a nation uh, are interconnected with what? With redemption. Why? In order for Israel to begin its way toward the promised land, in order for each person to belong, to be part of their new endeavor, redemption needed to be the starting point. Redemption needed to be the foundation. And let me tell you, 6,000 years later, it's still redemption is the parting way for us. It's the starting point for you and I. When we meet Jesus and we accept what he has done on our behalf and we give our lives to him, that is the starting point for you and I. Now, sometimes along the way, we forget about that. We may, we may be in the church for 30 years, 40 years. We've forgotten that. So then when we celebrate what we are going to celebrate today, this is a reminder of that step. This is a reminder of what Jesus did for you. So therefore, when we participate of this, we're saying to Jesus, Jesus, I'm accepting your second chance. I'm accepting the opportunity you're giving me today. So I'll take it. I'll receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. And therefore, I become a new creature in Christ. This is what he is looking for us to do, to experience as we partake of this, to, act, to become a new creature in Jesus Christ. As we look at the book of, of, of uh, Exodus, we'll see that redemption then marks a new life, a new beginning, and a new journey toward the promised land. Forever intermingling the two, right? Passover, communion, with the Exodus, with the second coming of the Lord, or our journey into the promised land. As we look at the Exodus, when we can think, uh, we can think of two in two ways. Number one, the journey to the promised land, which entails our experiences and our ups and downs here on earth. In other words, when, when you are declared innocent, you begin a process of sanctification, and therefore your ups and downs, your experience as a Christian will determine when you reach heaven or not. It depends on you. It depends on you because the Lord already provided for heaven uh, through Jesus' sacrifice. Secondly, it reminds us of the second coming of Jesus, which will conclude our journey toward heaven. 
So when we participate in this here today, you are saying to Jesus, I am waiting for you, but in the process, I am walking towards you. I'm, I am in the journey towards the promised land. And I'm asking through this, Lord, can you empower me? Can you send the Holy Spirit? When, when I am down in the valley, when I'm down in the valley in the floor, when I have nowhere to go to, can you help me? Can you provide for me? This is what uh, this uh, celebration this morning will bring to your life. Now, the Passover festival had its uh, uh, a main character, and the main character in the Passover celebration was who? Was it Moses? Who it was? The Lamb, Jesus. The lamb was the main character because the lamb was innocent. The lamb was given his life on your behalf. So every time the penitent would bring the lamb to be sacrificed, right? What was he saying? He's saying, well, I'm accepting the fact that he's innocent, that this animal is innocent, but I don't have to die. He will die on my behalf. And I'll be forgiven. That's a good deal, right? It's a good deal for you and I. But not necessarily for the lamb. But for you and I, amazing. So the main character of the Passover was the lamb. The lamb, the Passover lamb was slain and he spoke about Christ being slain on Calvary. Which today we celebrate by eating the bread which reminds us of the body of Christ. And drinking the juice which reminds us of the blood that he shed at Calvary. So the Passover lamb was the main character of the redemptive process. However, the, there were secondary characters uh, were, which were essential uh, and part of this ritual. Who are the secondary characters? You and I. You see, the lamb would provide forgiveness, but you had to bring the lamb. The lamb would provide redemption for you, but you have to give you have to take the knife out from the from the priest, right? And you have to cut the throat of the animal so that blood will be shed on your behalf. So the lamb provided for you, all we need to do is just come. We need to come to Jesus and understand that his death is because of me. That his death at the cross was my death. That he took. That he died on. So there were. Uh, that was important to understand. That that was happening. As we understand this process this morning. There were necessary steps. Uh, in the. Um, how would I say. In the required. Uh, sacrifices that God was asking them to do. Number one. The lamb needed to be taken on the 10th day to be sacrificed on the 14th day, which created anticipation. Created anticipation. So therefore, that was important to do. They had to provide for a savior even before the sacrifice would come. So the sacrifice would come on the 14th of Nisan, the first month and first month of the year for them. And then, but the, the animal needed to be taken on the 10th. Now, did that happen to Jesus? Yes, it did. You remember that when Jesus was taken at the Gethsemane? He was taken and then he was taken from one court to the other. You know, back and forth, back and forth. A couple of days passed and then he was sacrificed. But you need to understand that Jesus was taken before just fulfilling the promise of Exodus chapter 12. So therefore, the, lamb of, the Passover lamb was Jesus Christ himself. Now, notice the second thing that we need to understand here. Uh, uh, before we, we move on, let me, let me say this. Can we read 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20, to read about this anticipation thing? 1 Peter 1, 18 and following. It says, knowing that you were not redeemed with cor corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tra tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You see, see, Peter is taking us where? To Exodus chapter 12. Right? To the first Passover. Now notice. And then he says. He indeed was foreordained. You see that word on the line? What does that mean? That he was taken before he was sacrificed. 
he was foreordained. Now, in this case, the foreordination comes with the fact that it was done before the world was created, right? It says foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in this last time for your sake. So what is the, what is the Lord saying to us this morning? That Jesus loves you so much that he gave his life even before you were born. Can you say amen to that? Even before he saw you under the tree coming in sin, he gave his life for you. Even before he saw you rejecting him time and time and time, he accepted you. Even when today you're here and you're still stubbornly rejecting him, he saw you and he said, I'm going to die for him or for her no matter what. I love him and her so much that I will do that for them. And this is what we are seeing here with this anticipation. Secondly, Jesus' unconditional love for, for uh, you know, us more than, is more than evident in this process because it says one uh, lamb per household. And if there's um, a small family, share it with others. Now, that is amazing. We, we don't give a lot of emphasis to this part. But you know what, what the Lord is saying? I'm not only rescuing you to be my son and daughter. I'm giving you the mission that you need to do. What is your mission? Your mission is to share the lamb. To share what the lamb has done on your behalf. Share with others. This is the mission for, your, for our church. In order for us to share Christ, we have to have Christ in our lives. Right? This is what the Lord is telling us here. So if someone doesn't have it, you go and share it. You invite them over and add them to your family. This is the mission of the church. We need to be doing this every day. And yet, and I leave it to you to fill it up. Thirdly, they had to be year-old males without defect or blemish. See, they had to be a perfect animal. We were talking this morning in the Sabbath school class about that, about the fact that the lamb, you know, was beautiful. It was a beautiful animal, and the, and the owner had to give it away in order for him to get forgiveness of his sins. It must have hurt, right, to give away an animal that, you know, perhaps for a year he loved or she loved. Fourthly, they needed to be either sheep or goats, either of the ones. Fifth, they had to slaughter it on the 14th at twilight. Another hint. Twilight, the Bible says that Jesus expired between 3 and 6 p.m. before sunset. And, and you know, he gave away his life. So in the penumbra of the, of the day in the twilight, Jesus in the four, first month of the year on 14th on Nisan between 3 and 6, he gave away his life for you. Six, they needed to put the blood on the door frames. In other words, not only I'm going to change your heart, your interior, you need to take care of the exterior. You need to reflect Christ. And by putting the blood on the door frames, what they were doing is this house has Christ. In this house, Christ is the owner. Christ is the Lord. I have a question for you. Is Christ the Lord in your lives? Is Christ ruling in your homes, in your households, in your plans? This is what Jesus is telling his people to do so that they will be reminded of his sacrifice. They, you know, there are major instructions uh, on how to eat the, uh, you know, the Passover land, uh, uh, follow here, and they're explicit uh, with Moses, but then we reach Exodus 12, 11, which is the main text for this morning. And if you have it, can you open it? And thus shall, uh, it says, and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So, so you shall eat it in what? In haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, what is God telling us 
with this text? What is the reason for this requirement that they needed to eat the, the, land, the pass, uh, Passover lamb like as if they were ready to travel, to journey out of, the, out, out of Egypt into the promised land? What were they being told? They have been told that their redemption, that their salvation, that their liberation from Egypt would come at any time as long as they are ready and prepared. Right? This is what God is telling them. So eating the Passover lamb while being dressed for travel was a sign of their faith and also of their obedience and also of their readiness. Are you ready for the second coming of Jesus today? Are you ready now? Are you? That's the question for you today. Although they were not yet free, as they dressed up, they were preparing for this impending departure at any moment. Are you ready at any moment? If you have an a-, a car accident and you die, are you ready to go with the Lord when Jesus comes back? Are you ready? Are you afraid of dying? Are you ready with the Lord? Because if you are, the Lord will provide that salvation for you. Don't we have to have the same attitude today? As we participate today of t- today's communion, we have to be ready for our departure from this earth. This, as a matter of fact, this communion service should help us departure this earth as we Eat and participate from the symbols of Christ's body and blood. Uh, since partaking of the bread, which symbolizes the sacrificed lamb, uh, it deals with our redemption. Then eating it with the mindset of hastiness uh, is a reminder that we are just passing by. This is not our home. The sacrificed lamb, which is Jesus Christ, provided, by, provided the blood, which is the Jews here, needed for our redemption to take place. The lamb meat, then, uh, represented by our bread, eating in, it was eaten in haste, in readiness, in prepared, uh, needed to leave at any time. So therefore, when they were participating of this, as Jesus, well, you know, the time passed by and Jesus was going to come, every time they celebrated this, they were reminded of the second coming of the Lord. Are you reminded of Jesus' come today, second coming today? Are you ready to live this world today or the many, um, how would I say, the many worldly attachments that are keeping you from going to your departure? As we travel to the promised land, we need to stay connected. We need to be in communion with the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, right? Right? Jesus said, I am the true vine and you are the branches. Remain in me and I will remain in you because apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. As we participate today of the symbols of Jesus' sacrifice, uh, you know, may you continue to prepare for the second coming of the Lord as we would like to, uh, you to experience in your life. So that's our intention this morning. That as we partake of these symbols that you may put in your, ha- in your mi- uh, minds and heart the desire to have Jesus come. And Jesus may come today to you. Jesus may come to your life today. Are you willing to accept his coming into your life today? So I pray for you this morning. But before I do. We give you some instructions on how we're going to do this. You may stay seated until your section is called. We're going to start calling the first section, the furthest here on my right side. Once you come and you serve yourselves, you're going to grab a juice and a, a piece of bread. You're going to exit through the middle and go back to your place. Then this section will come and we'll do the same thing. And then the section on my furthest left will come, will get served, and then through the middle, Go back, and then you will be the last, and you will do the same thing. Uh, Now, is there somebody that needs to be served where you are at? I know John is not here. John is the one usually uh, that we help. Uh, Is there anybody else that won't be able to come here and and be uh, and serve yourselves, or we need uh, you need us to serve you? Let us know. All right. 
So at this time, let me pray and uh, give us about, about five minutes so we can prepare in the back and we can come forward with our presentation. Pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the reminder this morning that your son Jesus is about to come. We're also reminded that his sacrifice was the foundation of the whole thing because as he died and resurrected, now our eternal redemption will be true, will take place. So, Lord, we want you to come into our lives, into our hearts this morning. Help us to accept you and prepare ourselves for our departure from this world. If there's something attaching us to this world, cut the strings, O Lord. Help us go away to heaven when you come back. We ask, O Lord, that we're faithful to you, that we're committed to you, and as we partake of these symbols this morning, help us to do that, to be committed to you, to be faithful to you, and, O oh Lord, to help others as well to meet you uh, through the reflection of Christ in our characters. Bless our church in a mighty way, and thank you for listening to our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So those in charge, will you go to the back, and we'll get set in three minutes.
this moment, I would like to invite those that, are, that will be participating from this side to come forward and to uh, grab your bread and juice as you come forward. All right, so we'll start from this side, come forward, serve, and go through the middle, back to your place. Before, let me, let me stop you for one second. Sorry, I apologize. I need to do something. I need to ask my elders to pray for it. <laughs> I apologize for that. So let me, let's have our reading and our prayer for the bread and then for the juice. For I received from the... First Corinthians eleven twenty three twenty four, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me." Let's pray. Okay. Lord, we pause. And we thank you, and we contemplate what you have done for us. We were brought into this world condemned without hope, except for you. You gave us hope. You paid the price. You gave up your nature and took on ours among us. And then you said, now you can come back to me. And so we accept that and we thank you. And we also have the forgiveness that comes with all of that because the debt is paid. We just praise you for that. And we're so thankful that it happened. Bless this bread to our bodies, which is your body. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We had the reading for the juice. In 1 Corinthians 11, to continue, verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Hmm. Shall we pray? Amen. Father in heaven, as we've studied this quarter in the Sabbath school lesson, the New Covenant, Lord, we, we understand that we no longer have to sacrifice the animals. You were the perfect mm -hmm. sacrifice for us. Lord, each time that we drink the cup, may we remember that your blood was shed for us mm. to cover our sins, our mistakes, and we thank you so much for everything you've done for us, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. 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 Now my extreme right can come forward. Our second section, you can come.
Right, the people from my left, you may come. All the way there, you can, you can come. Now people from the middle, you can come. As they serve uh, the people in the back and then our pianist on this side, the people in the children's room, uh, is there anyone else that needs to be served? All right.
Has everyone been served? All right, so let me read to you 1 Corinthians 11, 26. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You see the death and the second coming right there. So at this moment, let us participate from the symbols of the body and the blood of, of the Lord. You may do that now. <laughs> 